Hi guys, N0ECK here. Today we're going to talk about feeding your antennas. No, I'm not talking about putting cheeseburgers on the top of your tower. I'm talking about the place where your coax or ladder line connects to your antenna. The feed point or center insulator of a direct feed antenna is where the coax or ladder line meets the antenna elements. We'll focus on verticals and simple dipoles today, just for simplicity. There are a few things a feed point insulator has to do for each kind of antenna. For a center fed wire dipole, it has to provide mechanical stability for the wire elements as well as the center support. It provides RF insulation between the positive and negative side of the antenna and the feed line attachment point. For verticals, it can also support aluminum antenna elements. The center insulator is also a convenient place to put a ballon if you need one. Any feed point insulator needs a few things to meet these requirements, but some things can be ignored uh, for portable or temporary installations. It needs to provide RF insulation at the frequency of use and mechanical support for the wires and itself. The ability to handle weather and UV exposure are less important for portable antennas, but very important for permanent antenna installations. Several materials are available that work well for center and end insulators. I'll go through the pros and cons of each material. PVC is probably the most popular material for homemade insulators. It's easy to work with common woodworking tools, it comes in all shapes and sizes, and is available pretty much anywhere. The only real downside of PVC is that it's not especially good at UV resistance unless it's coated. Polycarbonate or plexiglass is another material that's available at almost any hardware store. It's lightweight and resists UV very well. The downsides are that it's brittle and cracks easily as well as pretty much only being available in flat sheets. Delrin is the most popular material for commercial RF insulators. It has a great RF insulating property and it really no downside except it's not available at your local hardware or farm store. Glass and ceramics are also used for commercial RF insulators. They are a little more available in the form of insulators meant for electric livestock fence, but you have to work with designs that may not be exactly what you're looking for. Many other materials have been used for insulators by hams. Soda bottles or any type of scrap plastic will work for a portable antenna using thin wire and light feed line. Just remember the things that every insulator needs to do. Wood was a common material used by hams in the past. It's easy to work, easy to find, and it's a pretty good RF insulator. That RF insulation breaks down significantly when the wood gets wet and tends to rot when not painted or somehow treated. Well before my time, hams used to make ladder line with wood spacers that had been boiled in paraffin wax to protect them from the weather and keep them insulating when wet. The two most common feed lines that hams use are coax cable and balanced lines. These lines have different demands for their feed point insulator. Balanced lines can use a flat piece of material with holes drilled for strain relief and a lift point. PVC boards and polycarbonate can be used very easily for those particular applications. A coax fed antenna can use a connector secured to the insulator. Be aware that this connector and the connector on the coax have to bear all the weight of that feed line. I wouldn't suggest hanging 50 feet of RG8 from an SO239. Just support the coax on the support structure or loop it over as long as you mind the bend radius of any coax cable. You don't have to use a connector though, so for permanent installations you can go ahead and solder the coax directly to the antenna elements. For wire connections you have to make them both secure mechanically and electrically. Mechanical connections are what keeps your wire from pulling at the solder joint. This usually involves a strain relief of some kind. For stranded wire, I always tie a knot. It does reduce the working strength of the wire, but it also makes it less likely for that wire to pull out of the strain relief. At HF, this really shouldn't make much difference to the RF flowing down the line. For permanent center insulators, we like to use eye bolts, but for portable antennas, a hole in the material works just fine. The mechanical connection has to ensure that the solder never becomes the support for your antenna. As for the electrical connection, I've been working on the lineman splice that NASA uses, but until then I just use the wire nut style twist and solder method. 
weatherproof with your favorite electrical sealer and secure from as much movement as possible. Our favorite center insulator is made by connecting two PVC caps together with a short piece of pipe. We put an eye bolt on the top for the hoist rope and two more on the sides to support the elements. The connector is attached to the bottom PVC cap and wires are fed through small holes to attach to the elements. We usually just knot the wires around the support eyes and solder them to the feed wires. If you need a ballon, just use a bigger pipe and put it inside the center insulator. I hope this clears up some questions you might have had about feed point insulators. If you have more questions, you can ask them in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter. 7-3 and join the resistance.